Hepatitis B virus, commonly abbreviated as HBV, is a small DNA virus which is capable of integrating into a host genome and causes various liver diseases, most notably liver cirrhosis and cancer. The virus is transmitted through bodily fluids such as blood, semen, saliva and vaginal fluids, saliva being the least potent due to low concentrations of virus. However, there are no reports of HBV infections through sharing the same utensils. Also, sweat, tears and urine haven't been proven to spread the infection. On the other hand, needles, including tattoo needles, can transmit infection. Also, it is quite common for mothers to transmit the infection to its child during the birth. Hepatitis B is diagnosed by detecting HBV DNA and antigens. The latter are molecules recognized by our immune system as invasive. Concentration of HBV antigens correlate with HBV replication and is a good indication of how severe infection is. After infection settles in, alanine and aspartate aminotransferase, abbreviated as ALT and AST levels begin to rise and jaundice may appear. This is due to increased levels of bilirubin. ALT and AST levels are often measured to diagnose liver disease. This is done using liver enzymes test. Nevertheless, high ALT and AST levels do not necessarily mean HBV infection, but rather it denotes liver disease, which subsequently often is caused by HBV. Roughly two thirds of patients with acute HBV infection never find out that they had an infection, because virus often does not cause any symptoms or they may be mild. In cases where there are symptoms, infected could develop a fatigue, nausea, jaundice, dark urine, abdominal pain, and in some rare cases, liver failure. Most adults fully recover from virus. However, in some rarer cases, amounting to less than 5% of people, organism is unable to clear the virus and that causes chronic HPV infection. It is notable that children are much more susceptible to chronic infections. First year newborns infected by HBV have 80 to 90 percent chances developing chronic infection. Moreover, 30 to 50 percent of children younger than six years old develop chronic infection when infected by virus. Chronic infection is much more dangerous than acute. Usually, if infection does not clear within six months, it is called chronic. During chronic infection, HBV DNA concentration does not recede and ongoing infection could cause more severe illness. Nevertheless, chronic infection does not necessarily cause a disease. Quite often it results in mild or no disease whatsoever. But then again, in other cases, chronic infection may progress to aforementioned cirrhosis or liver cancer. The latter usually evokes fast death. 20 to 30 percent of adults with chronic infection will develop cirrhosis and or liver cancer. Vaccine against HBV is available. It lasts at least 20 years, usually longer, and prevents up to 99 percent of HBV infections. There is no specific treatment for acute HBV infection. Patients should balance their diet, drink lots of fluids, and avoid the necessary drugs. On the other hand, chronic infection is treated with medicines, including oral antiviral agents. However, only up to 40% of patients with chronic hepatitis require medical treatment. In most people, treatment does not fully cure infection, but rather suppresses replication of the virus. Therefore, for most patients, once initiated, treatment must be carried for the rest of their lives. Besides normal infections, extrahepatic infections, meaning 
outside of the liver occasionally occur. Extrahepatic manifestations of HBV infection are rare, prevalent in 1-10% to of patients with HBV infection. But when they do occur, it is tricky to manage them and hard to detect. It is also worth to mention that HBV-related diseases are not yet fully understood, and so it is often hard to predict the outcome of the infection. In conclusion, Hepatitis B virus is a dangerous, yet curable virus that could very well clay on its own, but may also cause serious liver diseases. The best way to deal with the virus is prevention by vaccination, which not only helps one to avoid infection, but also prevents it from spreading to other people. This has been Science In Depth, and I thank you for watching.